Tonight, in this newscast, we tell you about the missing plane that was discovered in Tombell, southwest region of the country last week. It took more than one day for the search team to get to the thick forest of a Boko village where the wreckage was found, coupled with the problem of bad roads. And also in this newscast, another fire incident here in the economic capital Dwala, more than 15 shops in Mashe Kongo reduced to ashes. We shall be back with the details. Good evening to you viewers. Welcome back from the weekend. You're watching the prime time newscast on Equinox Television. As we can write to in the southwest region of the country, it was announced in June 2014 that a plane which left Nigeria for Libreville, Gabon, got missing along the line. The Cessna 172 small aircraft fell in the thick forest of a Boko Tombel subdivision in the southwest region of the country and was only discovered that was last week precisely on Thursday. The plane had on board an American pilot that he was called William Fricks Patrick according to the papers that were found on the spot. He was the only person on board the plane and as we are speaking now investigative team are back from the forest and are holding crisis meeting. We shall be keeping you updated. This discovery was met by a hunter last Thursday eight months after the plane was declared missing. Security forces, traditional administrative authorities, even the youths were part of the search team. It took several hours, as I earlier indicated, for them to get into the thick forest. And with the team was a reporter for Hansen Chanji and Inosang Abega. It took more than 24 hours for administrative, gendarme officials, traditional rulers and the local population to come to a compromise. A meeting held Saturday ended late in the night, but yielded no fruits. The youth of the village of Eboko Bajo wanted the administration to guarantee them that developmental projects like construction of the road from Konye to Eboko Bajo will be carried out after the discovery. Well, when you discover something, it is the privilege of somebody who has lost it to compensate you. I cry plenty. Even when I, the Equinos, they wouldn't be able to come here as the first people for TV to come. When I see the sofa, when I take them for road, only for rich here, would they over cry for road? Why road not be easy? It'd be very bad. Would they cry for road, Palava? The youth feared that after they must have led the administration to the site, they, the government, will later come to take the wreckage without the consent of the villagers. They vividly recalled the Mbanga Pongo incident in Douala. Maybe have the feeling that uh, a similar situation like that of Mbanga Pongo can happen in their area. But all these things are left to God to decide. Another stake was that the wife of the pilot on board the WWF US plane had promised huge reward to anyone who finds the husband dead or alive. Or when this pilot had this uh, crash. There was a lot of promises, as we were hearing, although they come from one angle to the, to the other. So the people too, maybe... After a fruitless Saturday, everyone went to bed. Sunday morning, Chief Metuge Donatus wakes up very early, struggling to convince the youth to lead the gendarmes to the site at the Boko Bajo forest. An emergency meeting is held with village elders and youth. The main agenda bring out final solutions. Our cameras are not allowed to take even a photo of the village. Instructions given by Assistant Divisional Officer for Tombell, head of the operation. But our hidden camera could capture the heated meeting. After close to an hour, the youth decided they will lead the way to the forest. Upon one condition, there must be a traditional ritual. And that is, they have to slaughter a pig and to come with uh, maybe uh, two plastic of mimbo, that's our tradition it says. The administration provided about 50,000 francs CFE for a pig to be slaughtered as a symbol of the blood of the pilot and libation poured. All these are done in camera. The assistant divisional officer for Tombell commands gendarmes to keep Equinox television journalists on guard. Pas des images. Lord Rivien de Yaoundé, he told us in French. After the ritual, 
the delegation left for the forest in search of the wreckage. But villagers now cast doubt. Will the government forward their plight to the appropriate quarters? Will the road from Konye to Eboko Bajo be constructed? Or has the administration played foul on them? That is for Hansen Chanji there who traveled to the Eboko Bajo village in the southwest region of the country where the plane reportedly got missing in the southwest region of Cameroon. And as we speak, the investigative team are back from the forest and are currently holding a crisis meeting in Tombel. And just to know that those who went to the forest are reportedly with a severe injuries. We shall be keeping you updated as soon as we are informed. Now, William Fricks Patrick, that is the American pilot, and he was on board the plane. According to the papers that were found on the spot, he had more than 25 years of experience and had just collected the newly acquired plane from Senegal early that June in 2014. He left the Aminu Kano International Airport in Nigeria and was heading for Brazzaville, rather in Congo, via the International Airport here in the economic capital, Douala, and he never arrived the economic capital. It took about 30 hours for the search team to be able to get into the thick forest to get or see the wreckage of the said plane. Now the people of Eboko Bajo where the U.S. missing plane was found are great custodians of their customs and tradition. They are equally hospitable and ready to help strangers. Their major activity is cocoa farming and for Hansen Chandian Inon Sang Abega traveled to the village and now tells us more. The villagers of Eboko Bajo, just like their counterparts of the western and eastern slopes of Mount Kupemwaninguba, believe much on tradition. Tradition, we were told, demands that if a stranger visits the village, the chief must be informed. Our guide told us when we arrived at the village that his village youth association president must be aware that we are around to inform the chief. If not, he will be fined. The main activities of the people here include farming, cocoa farming, and hunting. They rely on cocoa. Yeah, and cocoa maybe, and the Kura cocoa have season that we always try to, to use with time. Yes, it will always generate cocoa, and uh, we will always get small things that we always use. That is our own uh, way of uh, living, our life of living. The month of June, we are told, will be time for harvest. The cocoa which we depend on, Starts coming by, we start working by January only to receive our first income by June. I mean, they call it nyari nyari. If you are to harvest five bags as your highest speaking by June, you start harvesting one tin. Uh -huh. So our season operates or starts fully after our suffering from January starts at uh, June. So by that June, we still face difficulties. It is only by August. September, that we begin harvesting more to maybe send our kids to school. No, that we only rely on cocoa, but there are other things that maybe when you come, uh, we have uh, maybe things like uh, plums. We, there are times that we we'll always get plums, and then we we'll even get uh, this uh, this uh, oranges with uh, pineapples. With some people here who raise pineapples, yes. When maybe they, when you come, you can see those times, and they have uh, maybe with time. Not uh, every season, they have their own season that will get them. Yes. For now, he who has a generator on is considered the richest person in Eboko Bajo. This is because others have no money to buy fuel. So at night, the village is in total blackout, except a spot where all villagers converge to watch late night films, children, adults, and others. <laughs> The people have no electricity, but they have pipe bond water generated from a spring offered to them by a foreign organization. The people of Eboko Bajo village are hospitable to strangers, but could be dangerous to stubborn strangers, we are told. It is an area to discover. 
And just to note that coupled with the problem of absence of electricity in the said village, there is equally the problem of inaccessibility, the bad states of the roads, which is a veritable nightmare to travelers. We shall be telling you more in our subsequent newscast. Now, over 15 shops have perished into flames at the Congo market here in the economic capital, Douala. The fire, which of course up to now the cause remains unknown, began at about 4 p.m. That was Sunday yesterday and burnt about 15 shops dealing in textile A and B. The affected shops are said to have been constructed with temporary building material. Firefighters took about two hours to be able to extinguish the flames which ravaged the shops situated close to the third place district. This is not the first time such an incident is happening at the set market that is in the Congo market after the last one some two years ago that uh, consumed hundreds of shops and just to note that most of the traders are up to now still awaiting resettlement. See here in the economic capital, Douala, a boy in Dibong one that's a locality in the Douala Free Municipality, decides to terminate his own life for remains or for reasons that are up to now unknown. His body was found hanging to the rope that was in the early hours of this Monday morning. Investigations have been opened. Jacques Ekwekinge has the details. What must have provoked 26-year-old Chemini Constantin into taking away his own life still remains a mystery to his relatives, friends, and the inhabitants of the Bongwan, a neighborhood in the Dwala Tree municipality, who got up early Monday morning to discover the lifeless body of his young student hanging to a rope tied to an AC protector, bare-bodied, just with a pair of jeans on, and his bearing slippers lying just by a stool which must have obviously served as a support for the victim to carry out the act. The senior sister of the victim tells us she had been informed of the situation by her junior brother's girlfriend early Monday morning, who came visiting just to come in contact with the macabre discovery. The sister says her junior brother up to the day before the incident was okay not showing any signs of having a problem. She was therefore in total shock when she learned of the incident. The forces of law and order immediately elected, descended on the scene, where after taking stock of the situation, have opened up investigations in order to get close on what circumstances must have led to the death of the young Chemini Constantin. <laughs> Now, a solution to the problem of Cameroonian artists on the way following an accord signed today between SOCAM and Cameroon Music Corporation, that is the CMC, Sambedi and Dede Iyango, who championed the cause, admitted that only the union of both organs can resolve the long-standing crisis that is plaguing the country's music landscape. They were speaking during a press briefing here in the economic capital, Douala, today, as we hear in the following report. A song of unity, then a handshake, proceeded by the signing of a protocol accord. This landmark gesture between the former board chair of the Cameroon Music Corporation and the hitherto rejected president of SOCAM symbolizes the beginning of a consensus between the two organs. To Sam Bende and Didier Yango, the time to put an end to the long-standing crisis between SOCAM and CMC is now, and the fruit of this deal is to ensure the proper and collective management of authors' rights, piracy, and successive music goods in the country. So I believe today that if they put in place the two people who, who have given the voice of, uh, the, from the artists is very important and is serious. Between 2008 to 2014, SOCAM and CMC have undergone series of unsolved disputes ranging from their legitimacy to legality and this accord, according to the actors, is a new pitch in the Cameroon music sector. That's been the biggest thing that uh, we failed to do because for seven years some of our brothers they were out of the uh, auto rights. They, they were not a part of any decision, I think. 
SOCAM and CMC would consider to either create a new organ or simply modify the text of an organ that would meet the preoccupations of artists and musicians. This press briefing is coming few days after Arts and Culture Minister in a racing outing urged heads of SOCAM and CMC to sit on a negotiating table and propose solutions. I'm a total Minister of Culture. I've called uh, Ndede Yangwanimi to work together with her, so it's okay. We are not the only, uh, the only actors, the associations of musicians, so many artists in Cameroon say it's enough now. The candidacy of Ndedi Yango, who won the election at Sokambo Chain 2013, was nullified on grounds that he is an American citizen. He says that concretizing this accord is a priority, but he would not let artists down if they still choose to have him. As a leader. Si les artistes euh, décident de me refaire confiance et qu'ils ont besoin de moi, je n'hésiterai pas. Now, the Secretary General of La Francophonie is expected in Cameroon for a four day official visit that's going to be in the nation's capital. Mikhail Jean uh, was elected last November 2014 in Dakar during the 15th Francophonie summit. Roland Akong, who looks at her profile, also tells us how Francophonie is beneficial to our country, Cameroon. His report. Mikhail Jean was chosen to lead La Francophonie at the summit of the French-speaking nations in Dakar, Senegal, November last year. The 57-year-old who immigrated with her family to Canada from Haiti in 1960 replaces Abdou Diouf of Senegal, who held the post for 10 years. La francophonie me marche dans le sang. Mikhail Jean, appointed Governor General in 2005 and 2010 in Canada, has proclaimed her intention to help La Francophonie gain new relevance with focus on women empowerment, children's rights, as well as the promotion of democracy and economic betterment. The former Radio Canada reporter has also served as a UNESCO Special Envoy in Haiti. Cameroon joined the 57-member organization November 1991 and the organization has sent observers to observe elections in Cameroon and gives scholarships to Cameroonians. La Francophonie was conceived to promote the French language and to check the dominance of the nature of English and American culture. Paradoxically, the USA, Ghana and Zimbabwe are some English-speaking countries who are members of La Francophonie. Francophonie has the responsibility of improving rights, democracy and economic cooperation in its member countries. Now, still in brief news, out of Cameroon, a senior opposition figure in Gabon, that is Andre Mba Obam, is no more. The 57-year-old died after a prolonged illness in neighboring country, that is Cameroon, that was on Sunday. His death was announced by the National Union Party, but the exact cause of his passing was not disclosed. His supporters set fire to the embassy in Benin and burnt cars on the street in anger. Gabon's interior minister Guy Bertram Mapangu said that everything will be done to lay hands on the perpetrators of the violence. Mr. Obam, former advisor uh, to the long serving president of uh, Gabon, that is Omar Oma Bango, uh, Oma Bonga, Bonga Rada, refused to accept uh, defeat in 2009 elections and declared himself a president. Now, in sports football, we talk about the League One games which took place in Stadia across the country. We talk about some six, six matches that were played in Cameroon at the weekend. We had Botafogo that had won against Young Sports Academy, won as well as Chov Douala, defeated New Stars one goal to zero, Unisports won against Young Blessé zero, and we also have uh, Fovo of Baham two against Union Sportif of Douala one, Cosmos of Mbam is having one against uh, Pantes Sportive of Nde with a uh, two. We equally had another encounter which took place at the weekend. UMS of Loom took against a Dragon and uh, was beaten by two goals to one. 
And now we talk about the female football team that have so far qualified for the All-African Championship that is built for Brazzaville Gabon this 2015 after they defeated their Ethiopian counterpart in the nation's capital at the weekend by two goals to one. Now on our advertorial page for tonight, PMUC has given out medals to some 206 personnel in the nation's capital. This is the third time the company is carrying out such an initiative since its creation here in Cameroon. The event Saturday was chaired by the Minister of Labor and Social Security as we hear in the following report. PMUC awards labor medals to 204 of its employees in Yaoundé. A sign of recognition of their hard work and professionalism in the enterprise which has been in Cameroon since January 1994. Grigor Owona, the Minister of Labor and Social Security, chaired the colorful event in Yaoundé Saturday, flanked by top officials of PMUC and other guests of honor. The gold medal went to personnel who have worked for PMUC for at least 25 years, and the silver to those who have worked for at least 15 years and the bronze to those who have worked for at least 10 years. Some workers received two medals, and the awards represented a lot of symbols to the meritorious workers. My impressions are good and I'm very happy. Now, with respect to the nation, I think that it's a big responsibility because more than ever, we must be and remain a model. Working in a private enterprise is not like in the public service. It is a lot of constraints. Spending more than 10 years in an enterprise, it is a great achievement for me. So I think that it is a great day for us. This is the third time PMUC, which is proud to have transformed the lives of close to 200 Cameroonians as millionaires, through its horse-taking games, is awarding labor medals to its meritorious workers. The company is making some technological strides to enrich more of its customers in the future. It's a good occasion for the general management to congratulate all the workers of the PMUC for their loyalty and for their fidelity all about this year. For the future, I hope that we will succeed and uh, have a good PMUC for all together. The social responsibility of the horse taking company is appreciated by government, which has backed 93 billion from PMUC through taxes, plus other corporate social responsibility activities of PMUC. The Labor Medal Award continues April 25 in Douala to meritorious workers in the littoral and southwest region. And that brings us to the end of this edition of the Primetime Newscast on Equinox Television. Viewers, we thank you so much for joining us. Until we meet again, goodbye.